You only need one great project to land a job as a software engineer. You might have been sold this lie that, oh, to get a job as a software engineer, you need like 10 projects, you need to build like all of these things, and the more projects you build, the better. But that is not really the case at all, because what employers are really just looking for is strong, complex software engineering skills. And to show that, all you really need is one really impressive project. So if all I could do was build one project and that was the only thing I could build to get me hired as a software engineer in 2024, one great option would be an e-commerce web scraping analyzer. And today I'll be showing exactly why this is a great project and also exactly how you can build this even if you're a beginner and I'll give you the actual code to this sort of demo project that we have here so that you can then take it and go extend it from there to make it your own. So this is the project. It is a cross marketplace analysis tool. So essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be selecting some kind of product like let's say this cracking the coding interview coding book and what we want to do is search up the prices for that book on Amazon and on eBay and then on any other marketplace websites perhaps in your country or whatever you're using and we're building this tool that allows us to see and compare the different prices in these different sites so you can just have a database of all the products you're interested in and then you can refresh the prices to see where it is the cheapest so before i show you exactly how to build this step by step what the architecture is everything like that let's talk about why this is such a great project specifically for landing a job so number one it solves a problem this is the first thing that employers want to see they want to see that you understand that coding is a tool to solve actual problems. This is an actual problem that I've, for example, had in the past. I've had products that I want to buy and I need to go to all of these websites and like manually search them up and like go find the lowest price on eBay and things like this. This essentially just automates it for us and nicely visualizes it as well. Number two, this project showcases complex software engineering skills. To build this project, you will have to combine quite a few very crucial software engineering concepts. You have to build a front end. You have a server that we're running in the back end. In the finished project, you would have a database. And what's really great about this is that it really covers all of the foundations of software engineering that you're really expected to know as a junior developer. And number three, it is visual. It is something that's easy to understand. The thing when a recruiter sees a project, if they can't immediately understand what it does, they will just ignore it because they don't have the time to really like look at the code and anything like that. And that is a very crucial part of a great resume project. So with that said, what actually is a web scraper? So what a web scraper is, is essentially you can think of it like a programming bot that goes to the website and just in the same way as you would navigate to the website as a human in your browser, except the bot sort of just does it for you automatically and it goes to the HTML of the website and then you can code it up such that it will find whatever information you're looking for from that HTML. For example, you can see all of these HTML elements have IDs, they have classes, and using these IDs and classes and some other tools, we'll be able to access, for example, this price element right here. And that is then what the scraper will return to us as data. And then of course, whatever other data we're interested in. That in all its simplicity is what a web scraper is. You can build one of them from scratch as well. But the problem that you will run into and that I always run into when I was building web scrapers is that the thing is many websites don't really like the fact that you're using a web scraper they're like actually very small and they have many tools that they use to essentially recognize when you're trying to use a bot to access their site. So you will end up in situations like your IP address getting blocked by the website. You'll get held behind chess and your entire tool might get blocked out of the website entirely. But today I'm going to show you a very easy way that you can build a great web scraper without any of this hassle, even if you're a total beginner and that is bright data. So I found bright data when I first ran into these issues when I was building one of my first web scrapers. Essentially, what Bright Data is, is that web scraping and web data platform, where essentially, if you use Bright Data to build a web scraper, they have all this infrastructure and all these tools in place to, for example, automatically rotate your IP address. So you don't get into the IP address issues that I just mentioned. And this really makes it the easiest and fastest way to build a web scraper today. And that's exactly what we will be using today. So I spoke to Bright Data and they were kind enough to partner with me on this video to show this tool to you. So what we'll be doing is using their web scraper ID which they also provide to you as part of their platform that essentially allows you to use their ready-made JavaScript functions and code templates from major websites to build your web scrapers really, really quickly without even having to figure out how to build it all from scratch. And then behind the scenes, they will take care of like essentially simulating real user behavior with your web scraper and they use anti-bot detection and things like this to make sure that your web scraper keeps working smoothly over time as 
well. So to get started with Bright Data, what you can do is go down below in the link in the description where you're going to be able to get free credits to get started with Bright Data. And after that, what you're going to do is go to brightdata.com. You're going to create an account. You're going to start a free trial. And once you do that, you're going to get into this dashboard right here. It's asking me to change my password. We're going to ignore that. And then what you can do is go to the left hand side and click on web data. So here we have a bunch of stuff. First of all, whatever web scraper you want to build, it's useful to check whether they already have a data set that they've already collected for you that you can use. They have, they have for example, crunchbase.com company data. They have LinkedIn company information. You can build something like a job posting tool or whatever. Amazon products data set. They have a bunch of ready-made data that you can already use. So that's super useful as well. But to build our web scraper, what we're going to do is go out here and click on my scrapers. So you can see that I've got a bunch of web scrapers in here that I've built in the past. But specifically for this one, we're going to use this one, eBay and this Amazon collector, which I forgot to name. So I'm just going to name it now. Amazon like that so I've already built them but to build a new one where you could click on is up here develop a web scraper and what that will give you is access to their web scraper API so then what you can do is either start from scratch and use their JavaScript syntax to build a web scraper pretty easily I have a different video which you can click on right here where I actually build a web scraper from scratch but they also have these templates that we can use they conveniently have an eBay products template and an Amazon products template so what you can do is click on one of these templates that will essentially give you a ready made template for, for example, this eBay products. So I'm going to open up the eBay scraper that I have right here. And there's only a couple of changes that I made to this. So I'm going to click on this and then edit the code just like that. And so I believe from this template, I removed this conditions because I don't actually care about the conditions. I'm not searching with clothes. And I believe I removed this line from here because we're not talking about the conditions at all. And then other than that, I simply changed the currency from GBP to USD right here because I'm going to do this in USD. And also this template is for eBay.co.uk. So it's for the UK one, which of course you could use if you're from the UK, but I'm going to use the US one just to be more general. So I'm just changing this to eBay.com. And those were the only changes I made this code. So what this is going to do is over here, it's going to build up this search URL, where essentially it's just adding these parameters to the URL. And then what is going to happen is that the web scraper is going to then navigate to that URL on this line 10 right here. And then after that, it's going to wait for a bit to sort of like some results to show up and, and then what it's going to do is is going to use this parse function which is going to be down below here to like parse the page to then find all of the information that we want from all of the search results so the way you can test this out it's easier if i just show you is down here you can define the input that you're giving to this code so for example, we're giving cracking the coding interview as an input, and then you can click on preview. And then up here, it's going to show the preview of this web scraper running. It's going to see it's it navigates to this eBay page up here, which we can even open up in our browser to see exactly what's happening. And then it's just finding this HTML page and essentially in this code down here is just finding, okay, what is the ID of all the prices and like the titles and things like this. And it's just returning them to us, which is now then going to show up in this output in here. Looks like right here, it didn't work for some reason, but usually the way it would come back is if you go back to development and then you can click on here and then statistics, it's going to create this web scraper run that is going to take a few minutes for it to run and then it's going to get back a certain number of records and then you'll be able to download it in any kind of format you want so i downloaded one of these before and the result comes back as something like this it's just as a list of these products that the web scraper finds with all of the prices and information and things like this so that is the first step we will build that for the eBay and for Amazon, which I also have in here. And for this one, I believe I simply used their template almost exactly. I don't think I changed anything here. You would find here from templates and Amazon products. That is what I used. So now that we have our web scrapers built, the next step is to build our actual application where we utilize this data. And the key thing to understand here is that while you can run it manually, what you can also do is run it via an API. So what we're going to do is build a server with an API that calls bright data with these specific URLs that then automatically call these web scrapers and get the data from these for us in our application. And so what our app looks like is something like this. So 
So this is built in React and in Flask. So we have our React front end right here, and I'm going to run through the code in a second. And then we have a Flask backend right here. So what is happening here is that we have, a, for example, this route in here called trigger eBay. So when we send a post request to this trigger eBay endpoint, this function in here is calling bright data with a specific URL, which you're going to get, by the way, by here, when you go here to copy link and you paste it, you, you'll be able to see that this is the exact data collector URL that you'll want to insert here. And then after that, we define some headers where we define the API token, which I've defined up here. And I'm going to have to change it after this video because I've now shown it to you. We define content type, things like this. And then we send the request to that endpoint. We get the data back as JSON. We get the keyword and we get the count. Then we set a data object and then we send the request by going request.post to the URL with these headers and the data that we just defined. And then we're going to get back data that at this point is just going to indicate to us that, okay, we started the web scraper run, but as we remember from before, it will take a while for that web scraper to actually run. So that is why I have, first of all, a different function to trigger the Amazon web scraper, which you will build exactly in the same way. And then I have this endpoint in here that actually fetches the data after it is ready. So the way that this works in the front end side of things that we have this main app component where most of the logic is happening. And we have first of all, this form up here where you can enter an Amazon URL and a keyword, which are going to be the keyword and the Amazon URLs that are given as parameters to these web scrapers, because the Amazon web scraper is going to take a product URL as a parameter and the eBay one is going to take the keyword as we saw before. So what we'll do is we'll copy this, we'll paste it in here, and then we will copy the name, which we'll use as the eBay keyword. We'll set that as the keyword. And when we click on add product in here, what is going to happen is that it is going to call the add product function, just like here. And then this function itself is going to run this fetch Amazon and fetch eBay functions, which I've defined above. So it's a post request. And as the keyword, we're giving this keyword that we now then need to access down here. And well, I guess that's just the default value that we can remove right there. And we're going to remove that as well. So over here, we're grabbing the keyword from this incoming data that is coming to this backend. And that is then making the actual call to the web scraper. And after that, what happens is that when we get the response back, assuming nothing goes wrong, we will return the data from this fetch eBay and very similarly from this fetch Amazon function. And I can see that from here because I'm console logging it on this line in here is that what we actually get back is simply something like this, where it gives the collection ID for the data that is being gathered. And it just tells us the date on when that data gathering began. And then inside of our bright data, we'll be able to see that we started the data gathering and we have this collection ID. And then what will happen is that it will show this sort of disclaimer in here that says fetching prices come back in a couple of minutes to refresh because we need to wait for that web scraper run to finish. And then we have this different button here called refresh prices that will then call this fetch data set from server function for all of the products in our products state, which is simply stored up here. In a real application, you would store this in a database because right now, if we refresh the page, everything disappears. But this is just to show you a demo of what we're doing. So for all of those products, it's going to call fetch dataset from server where we get the Amazon collection ID, which we have stored as part of this product when we added the product right here, specifically on these two lines. So it will fetch the data for the Amazon collection ID and the eBay collection ID. And then from those, it will set the Amazon price to be the Amazon final price that we find from the data that comes back. We'll see in a moment when we actually get this data to come in which format it is. Looks like it's still not ready, but I was doing this before. So I believe right here we can see the format in which it comes back. So it comes as an array, which is one item where the price will be this item final price and then value. So that is what we are accessing here. We're getting the Amazon price. And then for the eBay price, it comes back in a slightly different format. It comes back for some reason it just came back with one item. It usually should come back with more. But anyway, we get that. And from all of the array of eBay items that we get back, we will access the price from the item price and then value. And then this function here finds the minimum 
of those prices. So essentially, you don't need to worry about how this works. It's the reduced function in JavaScript. You can just ask Chavit TBD, honestly. Just describe it to data format and tell it, just find the minimum price from this. That what, that's what we're doing. We're finding the minimum price from all the eBay listings. And then we're setting the Amazon and eBay prices as part of the state of the updated products that we're set, then setting it into the products state. And then once this eventually comes back, we're, we will be able to refresh this and see the prices here. It's not ready yet, so I'll just show that to you in a moment. But that is the core architecture of this product. And then other than that, we have this product search component where we have just defined the input fields and things like this. Honestly, all of this I just got from ChatGPT. I could walk you through all of this code, but it's honestly easier for you to just describe exactly what you see here, what you wanna get. And then ChatGPT will basically just give this to you, or you can just use my code down below. All of this is completely open source. You can go and develop it further and things like that this and once I finally refresh it will eventually look something like this where we can see the Amazon price the eBay price and the price difference down below just like this and this is essentially the core idea of the project now what you can do is you can go to Amazon find a different product as well like for example this one right here the same thing copy the Amazon URL the eBay search term that we're going to be using and it will add the product which will send a request to our backend which sends a request to our bright data web scrapers, both the Amazon and the eBay ones. It will start the web scraping behind the scenes, which you don't need to worry about because you're using bright data. And then eventually again, you can refresh prices and you'll be able to see the price details for all of these products. And the one last thing over here is that, of course, over time, what we wanna do is be able to update these prices. So we wanna be able to rerun these web scrapers on a regular basis to find updated prices. So what we're doing is we have this use effect that is defining that on an interval of one day, which we're defining in here, it is going to run this refresh products function up here, which essentially just goes and takes all the products. And for each of them, it fetches eBay and Amazon, and it essentially updates the collection ID for both of them to be the new collection. So the updated data that we're now getting from the web scraper. And then it will push them to this updated products array, which we're initializing up here. And assuming nothing goes wrong, it will then set the products list, which will now have updated collection IDs for both of them. And now whenever we refresh prices, we will see the new and updated data. You can, of course, define whichever interval you want. And again, if you use Bright Data for the link down below in the description, you get free credits. So this can all be completely free for you. But that is essentially the product right here. Essentially, as you can see, quite a complex product. Hopefully you understood like the higher level architecture of the project. And then I will leave the code down below. You can go and explore it and then extend it from there. Go explore the different web scraping tools and bright data. Go explore what else you could do with this. In the real project, you might wanna add some kind of graphs in here to like see how the prices are changing over time. You could have a database, which would probably be your first order of priority to actually store this data persistently. You could add an automation script to like run these web scrapers in the background rather than having to have your servers and everything running. A bunch of things you can do, but I'm gonna leave that to you to go and extend it. Again, thank you for Bright Data for partnering with me on this video. Really great tool that I use all the time when I'm building web scrapers. Again, link down below, go use that. With that said, if you didn't like this project and you wanna see more ideas for really impressive resume projects that you could build to actually get hired, then I recommend you watch this video right here. You guys have loved a bunch of great ideas over there to get more great projects built. Go watch that video and I will see you there.